Okay, so here's our uh, challenge. We finish it a challenge. Um, we are to build a pulse motor out of a microwave oven. And the rules go as such. You may use whatever tools you need to build the pulse motor, but everything in that pulse motor has to come from the microwave oven. So um, I've never really thought about it, but I believe we can do it. So the first thing we're going to do is pull this big old girl apart. Um, it's the biggest one I have in stock at the moment, and stock means rubbish style microwaves that friends and relatives no longer want, and they give to me. So we're going to rip this one apart and uh, see if we can make a pulse motor out of a microwave oven using only the microwave oven and the tools required. Alright, so let's get this thing apart and have a look inside. Alright, so I've half gutted this thing. Uh, we've got our moth out um, capacitor. Make sure you short them before you go playing with them too much. You're likely to give yourself a zap if it's still got some charge in it. Um, we've got a noodle of wire there we can use some micro switches, the magnetron is still in there, we have to rip that out get our magnets and uh, we might rip that board out too and see what that's got on it we can use uh, got a couple of diodes there so uh, we're halfway there, the motor, we'll be ripping that out because we'll be using that as well and uh, that'll just about do us so I'll keep on ripping it apart and then we'll come back and have a look what we've got to work with so here's what we've got to work with. Um, some micro switches there. A couple of uh, high voltage diodes. This one here is the one we want. I don't know what this means with the one large one going one way and one small one going the other. But uh, this one here should be the one we'll be using to capture our flyback. Uh, that won't be needed. Motor. Or our little fan there that we can use. Our magnetron, we have to get our magnets out of there. Circuit board, not seeing anything on here we can use. Um, not in this project anyway. Our mot and uh, a couple of globes, which I don't think we'll be using either. And a uh, heap of um, screws. So, um, Two jobs we've got to do next is uh, that. We'll get the magnets out of our magnetron. Then we're going to uh, split our transformer so we can get our two coils off. Now just get a grinder. All the mots are the same, they're all welded. The bottom is just one continual flat piece of steel, and the other section is your e core. So you just grab a grinder and cut through there on both sides. You can see it's not welded very far, just along one side. Just cut through there, knock that bottom off and nice and gently pry your two coils off. You have to decide which one we're using. So uh, there what we've got to do next. So um, we'll come back when I've got the uh, two coils off our core and our two magnets out. And um, we'll go from there. See how we're going to go about this. Okay, so we have our two magnets there. Um, our primary coil came off really cleanly um, from our transformer, and the paper wrapped around it came off really cleanly. The secondary was uh, very stuck, but um, nonetheless, it is off. I'm not going to try and peel too much of this paper off because it's. Um, totally impregnated with the epoxy glue that they've used to stick it all together so it may end up tearing the very fine wires it's already broke the uh, spade end off of that one but that's alright we managed to find it and grab it so our resistance of our primary coil is sorry about that light that's better about 2.7 ohms and the resistance across our secondary eighty six point four ohms. So um, for this project, we'll be going for the primary coil. We're going to use that. This once again will make a very nice window motor. So we'll save that for another project. All right. So um, 
I guess we have to make some sort of frame and a rotor and uh, I'm guessing I'm allowed to use some glue to stick the magnets on could that be classed as part of your tools um, alright so we'll go and make some sort of frame out of the microwave oven shell itself and um, see what we can come up with for um, in regards to a rotor uh, so I'll be back once we've done that ok so here's where I'm at at the moment uh, made up a little box out of the uh, lid around the microwave oven and um, we trimmed and filed and stuck this uh, micro switch on with a little lever here um, on with some double sided tape and I've cut two out of the four fan blades off so these two big ones come around and uh, turn the switch on it's going to be awfully noisy and not sure how much uh, current that switch is going to be able to handle but we'll find out uh, so the plan is now we've got to build, cut some sort of rotor out and um, carry it for our coil glue our two magnets on um, hook up the diode and um, we should be somewhere near finished and we'll see what happens so um, I'll keep on building see where we end up but, uh, didn't know what to use for a flywheel um, steel was no good it's too floppy the uh, steel casing and probably not what we want with magnets so we've just used the uh, big glass dish that was in the uh, microwave itself <laughs> an awfully large heavy flywheel and uh, not something we would want going too fast I don't think but anyway we'll see what happens our magnets are stuck on with double sided tape our flywheel stuck on with double sided tape our uh, little micro switch on there is stuck on with double sided tape the steel casing is glued to the old fan motor housing by super glue and our coil is stuck on with double sided tape so um, now we're just going to do some wiring put some power on it and see what happens so uh, we'll be back shortly alright so uh, here we go ready for our first spin um, our glass plate is held on by our double sided tape our coil is held on by double sided tape our reed switch is held on by double sided tape and the frames are glued to the steel housing of the fan motor with super glue and our magnets are held on by double sided tape so our first run is going to be at 6 volts um, our little LED is collecting inductive kickback by that diode there which is also from the microwave everything is from the microwave except for the double sided tape and super glue that's all we used so uh, we'll give her its first spin up nothing exciting really um, usability next to zero in other words a good for nothing motor other than the fact that we use nothing but the parts in a microwave oven to make it slowly building up speed we'll lift the voltage up to 8 volts you can see the LEDs flash a little bit just as the switch is coming on that'll be due to the arcing we'll not be liking that current that is flowing through there it's just only a little micro switch but nonetheless it is turning not sure at what speed those magnets will fly off but um, I'm hoping that it doesn't fly off and hit me Take it up to 12 volts. And get some bright flashes now.
It just keeps it going until something falls to pieces. Fourteen volts, okay, that sounds good. Now my whole bench is wobbling. And it's a bloody big bench with a lot of mess on it at the moment. One of those magnets is going to shoot off for shortly, I'm sure. And I'm going to stand back a little bit. <laughs> There we go. That's it. Show's over. <laughs> but nonetheless, our um, all microwave pulse motor actually ran quite surprisingly until it, oh, if it didn't take out the um, nice little bit of equipment there and uh, there you go one pulse motor from a microwave stuck together with double sided tape and super glue that's all we used, didn't even use a soldering iron uh, a few hand tools, tin snips, screwdrivers and uh, that's it build time about two hours usability none practicability none um, we just did it because it was a challenge. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in my next crazy project.